September is Prostate Cancer Awareness Month. I was not aware of that. Yeah, not many people are aware of that. Prostate cancer doesn't get anywhere near as much recognition as, oh, I don't know, breast cancer. What breast cancer is to females, prostate cancer is for males. Now, lung cancer is the deadliest of all the cancers. It's the leading cause of cancer death for both males and females. But breast cancer ranks second as a cause of cancer death in women, and prostate cancer is the second leading cause of cancer death in men. Prostate cancer is the most frequently diagnosed cancer in men, and if you exclude skin cancers, breast cancer is the most frequently diagnosed cancer in women. One in eight women will develop breast cancer over a lifetime, while one in six men will develop prostate cancer over a lifetime. So even though it's more likely for a man to develop prostate cancer over a lifetime than it is for a woman to develop breast cancer, and the fact that men on average die five years earlier than women, which of these cancers do you think gets more funding and attention? Breast cancer, of course. Breast cancer is the third most common cancer behind lung and prostate cancer. But the U.S. government has spent more than twice the amount on breast cancer research than for prostate cancer research. In fact, breast cancer gets more than double the funding of any cancer, not just prostate cancer. Now these statistics are from the National Cancer Institute. These numbers only include government spending on cancer research. It does not include charities or publicity funding, whether privatized or funded by the government. And when it comes to publicity and funding, prostate cancer pales in comparison to breast cancer. You have sports players who wear pink to raise awareness for breast cancer. Fields have the pink ribbons on them. Baseball caps and bats are pink too. They don't do this for prostate cancer. What about female athletes? Nope, still just breast cancer. During the month of October, everything turns pink. Websites like Google, Yahoo, and eBay will change their webpage pink or have the pink ribbon featured on their page. You see bumper stickers on cars and flyers around campus about finding a cure. I was tutoring a couple of students last October and noticed that their homework sheet was printed on pink paper and their schools had them wear pink wristbands to raise awareness for breast cancer. I remember asking them if their school did something like this in September when it was Prostate Cancer Awareness Month. Were there blue wristbands? Was homework printed on blue paper? And not only did they say no, but they were surprised when I told them about Prostate Cancer Awareness Month. They were like, oh, I didn't know there was a Prostate Cancer Awareness Month in September, and I don't blame them. How could you possibly know that? In the stores, on TV, on the radio, it's always breast cancer this and breast cancer that, but not one word is uttered for prostate cancer. When you walk into the supermarket in September, not only will you not find any products with blue ribbons on them, you can actually find some products with pink ribbons on them. So breast cancer gets plenty of attention in its own month. Not only does prostate cancer barely get any recognition in its own month, if any, but they already put out products for breast cancer during Prostate Cancer Awareness Month. I remember going into the supermarket in September and finding a bag of Milano cookies with a pink ribbon on it. It's bad enough that they would never have a blue ribbon on it for prostate cancer, but to have that out when it's still Prostate Cancer Awareness Month is an insult. Apparently October isn't enough. It has to take over Prostate Cancer Awareness Month too. In October, when you go to just about any public place like a bookstore or supermarket, everything is pink. Milano cookies, KFC, Progresso soup, bounty paper towels, freshetta pizza, Morton Salt, Ginger Ale, Activia, Yoble, Northland Juices, Cookie Cutters, Shirts, Fanny Packs, Airplanes, Water Bottles, Coasters, Socks, Pepper Spray, yeah, Breast Cancer Pepper Spray, and so much more. You can easily find plenty of breast cancer merchandise. Now, am I saying that it's a bad thing that breast cancer is getting all this funding and attention? No. But what I am saying is that it's unfortunate that no other cancer gets anywhere near the amount of funding and attention that breast cancer does. Prostate cancer is to men what breast cancer is to women, yet there is a huge lack of funding and attention for prostate cancer in comparison with breast cancer. All of these products that have pink ribbons on them for breast cancer awareness never have blue ribbons on them for prostate cancer awareness. I'd really love to see these same products with blue ribbons on them as well. When you buy many of these products, you also make a donation towards breast cancer research. Pepperidge Farm will donate up to $50,000. Activia is looking to donate up to $1.5 million. 
Yoble has pink lids that you're supposed to save, and they have donated over $30 million. Were there blue lids for prostate cancer? No, of course not. And Northland Juice's Drink to the Pink has donated $450,000 to breast cancer research. How much have any of these companies donated to prostate cancer research? That's right, zip, zero, zip. Oh yeah, that's right, zero dollars. Now breast cancer does affect some men too. About 2,140 new cases are expected in men. So it's really not as common, but it can still happen. Some commercials on TV will recognize this, but many of them don't. They'll say, for our mothers, for our sisters, for my daughter, for my wife, for my niece, for my aunt, etc. As if it's a cancer that only affects women. They won't say, for my husband, for my brother, for my father, for my son, for my uncle, for my nephew, etc. There have even been cases where men were turned down from breast cancer screenings just because they were male. My chest is swollen, I feel knots all in it, just like it started with my dad. In 1990, a stunning diagnosis for Scott Cunningham's father, Robert Cunningham. I uh, felt a knot in my breast, and so I had my wife check, and she said, you better go get that checked. It was breast cancer. I'd heard through the years that men could get breast cancer, but I never thought it happened. Six months later, Scott's mother was also stricken with the disease and just recently some troubling symptoms for Scott. I noticed these knots coming up. I put it off for two or three months and then I got to thinking, well, you know, because I know I didn't have no insurance, but now I know that something has to be done. With no insurance, he called the local health department and asked if I could get a screening for breast cancer. And they told me that, that they only screen women. In fact, the local health district does have a federally funded program, but just as Scott was told, it's very specific on who qualifies. And we have a program called the North Carolina Breast and Cervical Cancer Control Program. This is for women ages 40 to 64. In your insurance news, if you think only women get breast cancer, think again. 45-year-old Scott Cunningham of North Carolina can attest to that. But not only are there breast cancer commercials that ignore the fact that men can get breast cancer too, but there are even breast cancer commercials that make fun of men, make men look like perverts, and some even show violence against men. In this one, we have a bunch of men walking with their tits. Walk with my tits, walk, walk with my tits. Walk with my tits, walk, walk with my tits. Walk with my tits. So again, men can get breast cancer too, but this commercial is making it seem as if only women get it and men don't. It also implies that men don't care about breast cancer and the only way that they would care about it is if they had breasts themselves. So not only is this commercial implying that breast cancer does not affect men, it's also implying that men are selfish. Yes, it's that time of year again, when Fashion Target's breast cancer shirts are on sale in the office. So you should always be aware of how you ask for them. Say, are those for sale? Yes, the man should be aware of how to ask for the shirts, but the woman hitting the man is perfectly appropriate. Ooh, let's try that one again. Those are swell. Or how about, do those come any bigger? Yeah, because when a man says something like that, just assume the worst. Don't think anything like, oh, maybe he was talking about my shirt. Or if I'm not sure, I can always just say, excuse me? Nope. He's a man. Don't give him the benefit of the doubt. He must have meant something perverted, so I have every right to slap him. Ouch. Looks like someone needs a little help. I know, right? She does. Repeatedly hitting somebody you work with should not be tolerated. She needs help. Or she could just stop doing it. So how do you ask properly? I was wondering if I could please purchase a Fashion Target's breast cancer shirt similar to the one you are wearing, please. Why, sure. Well done. Okay, so let me get this straight. Even though it was the woman who slapped the glasses off the man, repeatedly misunderstood him and automatically assumed that he meant something that he really didn't. 
it was still the man who had a lesson to learn from this. The lesson wasn't for the woman to make sure that she understood what he meant and to not be violent. Nope. The man who got slapped for making an innocent comment was the one who needed to learn from this. Imagine a commercial like this where a man is wearing a certain pair of pants and a woman makes a comment about them, and the man slaps her because he thought that she was talking about his junk. That would not be tolerated. But it is when the genders are reversed. Here's another one that makes men look like perverts. Are you too busy to do your monthly breast self-exam? Unsure of the right technique? My name is Cam. I'd like to help. Let me examine your breast for you. Absolutely free. I'm highly trained and highly motivated. So call the number on your screen. Call takers are standing by. So put your breasts in my hands. Let Cam do your breast exam. So we have another commercial that implies that only women get breast cancer. So this commercial is saying that women should check themselves for breast cancer because the world is full of creepy and perverted men who'd love nothing more than to cop a feel. They couldn't have a woman there as one of the people who's looking to do some groping. They were all men. And do you think they'd ever have a commercial like this for testicular cancer? Where we'll see a few women who want to get their hands on a man's balls to check him for testicular cancer? And the commercial implies that men should do it themselves because you never can trust a creepy perverted woman to do it. No, never. That would make women look like creepy perverts, and we can't have that. It's perfectly okay to portray men that way, though. It's really a shame that even though men are more likely to be diagnosed with prostate cancer than a woman will be diagnosed with breast cancer, prostate cancer doesn't get anywhere near as much funding or recognition. When I see more blue ribbons for prostate cancer, I will be less offended when I see pink ribbons for breast cancer. Because for every pink ribbon I see, that's also one blue ribbon I won't see. 